Hi, my name is Leilani, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you a review and flip through of the Exploring Creation with High School Astronomy. Now, this is an apology -a book, very popular company. It is fairly new. There was a need on YouTube, so I thought I'd fill that need. Now, I don't usually do high school curriculum reviews or talk about them at all because I don't have a high schooler. Not yet, but I do have a middle schooler and we did use this book to supplement their astronomy book that they had at their co-op in class. So I am very familiar with this book because we did use a lot of the material and I've skimmed through it, I've read through most of it, and I feel very comfortable sharing with you what it looks like inside. So first of all, this is from Apologia. It is a Christian-based curriculum, knowing that when it comes to the evolution and creation debate, it seems as if astronomy has a lot of evolution weaved in throughout it, and that is because they will teach theories as they are supposed to be facts, so to speak. So when you have the theory of superstring, superstring theory, it will be taught as a fact, when in fact superstring is a theory. So it's really important whenever you study astronomy, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, it's important to see that some things are theories that doesn't mean it's fact. So keep that in mind and astronomy is very tricky in that way because it's easy to believe certain things are factual. So it's always good to have a Christian based astronomy curriculum, especially if you're a Christian and you want to learn from that perspective. So here is the book right here, Exploring Creation, High School Astronomy, and it is Apologia. Now it does come with an introduction and like all Apologia books, it does come with book extras. Yes, I'm covering them up so you don't go look at them, but keep in mind that these high school books also do come with some extra material that you can find online. And here is your table of contents. So it has a total of 14 modules and each one has a different topic. So the mysteries of the universe is such a great chapter because it introduces you to all these really crazy cool things in the cosmos, like normal matter versus antimatter, cosmic rays, dark matter, dark energy, black holes, wormholes, the temperature of the universe, and where do we go from here? So this is a, such a beautiful introduction and I actually absolutely loved it. And, but then it goes into the history of astronomy, which a lot of books don't really get into, but I think it's really important to see how astronomy progressed through the ages. And I love how they even talk about the Chinese and the Babylonians and the Greeks and the Mayan and then the Renaissance and etc. The next one is understanding the basics. So you're gonna go into some measurements and distance, and this is where you're gonna get into the astronomical unit, light years, and it's gonna give you some really good math, so to speak, because you get into speed and velocity. Now, this book in general is a really good companion book with the Apology of Physics. So if you've done physics, it's great to do astronomy. If you're doing physics and you want a little bit extra, you can do this as well. If you haven't done physics yet, you can still do this book. They will even say so in the front of the book with the introduction, but they will also say that you may not be able to do the math, and that's okay. You can still do the book without the math, but if you want to get the fullness of the curriculum, you need to have a fairly strong mathematical background and, and physics math physics, physics math. We're gonna get into our solar system. We're gonna talk about all the different universe models through history. Then when you get to module five, you're gonna get into the sun and the moon and the planets. So this is where those topics start to happen. And we're gonna talk about the sun. Module six is huge. It's basically the planets, the inner planets, I should say. Module seven is gonna be the moon. Eight is telescopes. Module nine is now gonna be your outer planets. Module 10 is gonna be your dwarf planets and the asteroid belt. And so that's where you end the discussion of our solar system because then in module 11, you're gonna get into the universe. So you're gonna start talking about constellations. You're gonna talk about, you know, northern spring, summer, uh, southern autumn constellations. It's the constellation chapter. And then in the end, you're gonna start talking about black holes. Module 12 is gonna talk about the stars. You're gonna talk about the age of the stars, the brightness, the classification, those kind of things. And module 13 is gonna be your galaxies, the different types of galaxies. And then module 14 is gonna get into celestial navigation. So this, once again, is also a lot of 
math and actually mapping. All right, let me show you some of these chapters to give you an idea of what they look like. So here's your introduction. I love it because they have some universal truths and then they do have a section on Bible beginnings. They have a scripture verse right here, scientific beginnings, some interesting facts. Module one is my favorite chapter. It really gets into some of those really cool things like I mentioned before that can really get the kid hooked in to wanting to learn about astronomy. So here's the history chapter really quick. But I am going to fast forward a little bit so you can kind of see the math that gets involved with this book. So here's the basics, measurements. So they talk about the different measurements. And you can see we're talking about astronomical units right there. And look at this. Okay, this is the easy stuff. Okay, and then here's some questions. And a lot of them are very math based. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. Especially with this chapter and you can see the questions are kind of falling in between some of these readings so they can you know read part of a module do a question one week and then the following week they can read the rest of the module like I said there's 14 so you don't have to do a module a week you can kind of spread them out over the year unless you're trying to do it as a unit study here's some stuff with velocity mass and weights and this is like the basic stuff that you need to know to kind of make it through this book. Oh, this is important, rotation versus revolution. Talk about energy. Here's their solar system page. And they're gonna show you all the history behind it, math. Let me go ahead and jump ahead to the inner planets and they have a really cool little pattern. Oh, by the way, here's the sun. As you can see, here we go. We got some equations in there down here. So they definitely need to at least be done with, I would say algebra one, algebra two and geometry. So they have a really cool system when they're teaching you the different planets. And let me kind of show you how that works. So this is the module on the inner planets. And here they're just kind of talking about the orbit is angles, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's get to the planet Mercury. So I love this. So here's Mercury, a nice little introduction, the size of Mercury, the diameter of Mercury, and you learn how to find the diameter with the equations right there. Then you're gonna talk about the volume. You're gonna talk about the different layers of mercury, which is really cool, no math involved. Mercury's surface, no math involved, but you have some fun vocabulary words there. Beautiful pictures of mercury. And um, then you're gonna get into the atmosphere, magnetic field, temperature on mercury, orbital mechanics. That's gonna have all the equations. That's the math side of things here. And then what a day is like on mercury. It also talks about, okay, this was the speed, the moon and the rings of Mercury, mass property. So I love this. Every single planet has this cute little picture where if you jump on Mercury, you're gonna jump 7.9 feet, but it's only three feet on Earth. So they show you the difference and how gravity you know, affects Earth versus the planet that you're talking about. Spacecraft mission to Mercury. And then you've got your questions. So you could do Mercury one week and then the following week, you can touch on the next planet, which is Venus. So it's the same kind of pattern here, which is really nice because you know what to expect and you can compare and contrast the different planets. Um, I'll show you the cute little, they should have, yep, there it is down at the bottom, 3.3 feet on Venus, three feet on Earth. So the gravity is not very different from Venus to Earth. So of course it keeps going, here's Earth. Earth is, you know, my favorite planet, as it should be. And it has the same kind of stuff and it goes on. So that gives you an idea of how they kind of work the planets. Of course, the moon, it has a whole module to itself. You're going to talk about everything from surface temperature, phases of the moon, gravity, orbital mechanics. And of course you have, you know, your questions. 
no astronomy book is complete without a module on telescopes. So telescopes are amazing. If you can't purchase your own telescope, then check to see if your library will run out or if you have a museum nearby where you can go to one of their stargazing parties because a lot of museums will do that. But telescope science experience is probably the only lab you're gonna come across. It's not even a lab. It's just a, a suggestion, right? There are actually no science experiments in this book to be frank. And Apologia is great with science experiments, but there's none in this book. It's mostly reading and answering questions. But if you want to have an experience besides stargazing out into the night sky, go find a way to get your eyes looking through a telescope. So there's a whole chapter in here. It talks about how the lens is created, all the math behind it. And of course they have some telescope questions. They also have the optics of your eyes. So we go into some biology a little bit there. And here's the next chapter on the outer planets. Same kind of pattern as before. Then we get into the module about dwarf planets and the asteroid belt. And so this is just a lot of information. That's it. And the nice little chart on all the different dwarf planets. Not all of them, because obviously there's a lot of dwarf planets. But here are some that they have. Uh, here's the universe. They're going to be talking once again about cosmic rays. This is kind of a fun chapter. Constellations, it's cool because they talk about all the different constellations, how to explore them, how to find them, different seasons they're in, whether you're in the south, whether you're in the north, what, how they change, whatever country or city or state you're in. Pretty cool stuff. I also love that they do keep astrology out of it. It's just kind of like, you know, this is what it is. Kind of need to see the constellations. Then they get into the universe stuff with the black holes, you know, no black hole present, objects fall into black, you know, that kind of stuff. It doesn't get too deep into it. So, I mean, it's not a whole module on black holes. It's just, you know, one little section right here and then some questions, but they have some really cool pictures in here. Determining the distance of a star. Here's a little classification of the stars. Beautiful pictures once again. Section on galaxies, and these are gonna be all the different types of galaxies. And then this is gonna be celestial navigation, which to me kind of goes along with the telescope because you learned your constellations, but it does give you a lot of the math behind the navigation right here, angles. Prime Meridian, Equator, Latitude, Longitude, that kind of stuff. Of course, they have an extensive index. And these are the answers to the questions. So if your high schooler likes to cheat, you could, you know, rip them out. <laughs> but they're also in the back of the book. You don't have to get a teacher manual to go through this. You just need this book, and that's one thing that's really, really nice about this high school astronomy book. If your child is very much into learning more about astronomy, especially from a Christian perspective, I highly, highly recommend Dr. Jason Lyle. Look at his stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down in the section if you have any questions and if this was useful to you. So thank you so much for watching and I will stick some videos around my face right now so you can check them out. And I will see you guys in my next video, hopefully. Bye.